Hi, I'm Tom Miggett from Tom Miggett Photography and as you can see today I'm not alone. I'm with one of my favorite makeup artists uh, around Edinburgh. Definitely one of the most creative ones that I've ever encountered. This is Samantha Jack. Hey Sam. Hi. How are you doing today? <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, what did we do today before we dive in? Uh, we went on a location scout basically for an upcoming project that's going to be quite exciting, quite edgy, so Absolutely. looking forward to this one. <laughs> oh, me too, definitely. And today we're here to talk to you, to share with you a little bit of behind the scene of a shoot that we did quite a very long time ago. <laughs> that was back in May. Uh, and um, so we're going to go through um, different photos uh, resulting from that shoot and I'm uh, going to explain you what we did, any challenges that we faced and uh, the reason why we uh, we did those things uh, and the ambience so you get a grasp as to uh, what the experience was for us. So uh, first off, the model. She's, Kirsty. Ah, she's brilliant. Kirsty's fantastic. Yeah, Kirsty, if you look at this video, thank you so much again. I, it's been a blast. It always is with you. Uh, and uh, I think you're a tremendous uh, model, but you're more than that. You're a tremendous person as well. Great personality. Always committed and willing, uh, despite the cold, uh, the blizzard, despite everything, the oh, harsh conditions, and my uh, dirty jokes sometimes it does. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, really thumbs up for uh, for Kirsty on this one. So um, the theme for this sh shoot was uh, Clockwork Orange and I'm not the initiator of that idea, you are. So tell us why you want to do that. Um, basically being a creative makeup artist, the Clockwork Orange was I quite like the idea that we could create something that was quite edgy, quite haunting, but at the same time I wanted it to be quite beautiful as well. So we kind of at the end had a wee bit of play with it but we captured what we were looking for. We wanted that feeling a uh, obviously the human exterior but the robotic interior so it's very serious, very dark but not to the point where it's bordering on horror and that was the feel we were going for and I think we captured it pretty well. Mm. And I mean we, interestingly everybody who's familiar with this theme and movie know that uh, that was done with a male actor, right? A famous yes. male actor. But why why did we go for a female model instead of a male? Just for that reason. Um, everybody knows the main character in the book, um, obviously Alex, is the mad male and he's the same in the film. And I was like, well, let's throw away a spanner in the works here and let's do it with a female and see if we can create the same sort of darkness, the same sort of madness through an image that obviously in the film a male can naturally probably convey better because of facial features, bone structure, height, natural aggression you can create quite easily from a male's perspective and from an art perspective for me it's quite difficult to obviously convey that on a female mm. who's naturally meant to be very feminine, very delicate so I thought I wanted to give myself another challenge and see if we could add a bit more edge to this with throwing a female in there instead of a male. I think what what personally what I liked about the idea was, um, as you just said, uh, you would not expect such personality being um, expressed by a female. Yeah. Uh, not saying that there's no crazy female out there. We know some, yeah, <laughs> but definitely. you know, I, I, for me, it was that contrast of taking what is expected by everyone to be something soft, gentle, and making it mentally deranged yeah. and uh, totally unexpected and going for that 360 um, uh, contrast and and I think Kirsty was was the right choice for that because yeah. she, I, I've done shit with her in the past and I've always pulled her, a genuine beauty and softness and, and kindness uh, that is conveyed by her personality and, and, and a figure and I think using her that way in a totally different scenario uh, was very interesting and I, uh, and I think for her as well she, she yeah. never she'd never seen herself being yeah, yeah. mad and uh, cruel in a way and, yeah, that's and crazy. Right. You can actually see even from the model's perspective the fact that 
she's then been given a new challenge. Mm. And you can see her you could see her growing. You could see her shortly starting out. She was quite deserved and then she got, really got into it and you could totally see her picking up the character, which was great. Yeah. <laughs> to a point that at the end we, we yeah. ended up with more fashion type yeah, of shoot. It was kinda of weird to go back to that routine mode of uh, of being nice and, and, and beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> just relax, just pose and she was like, What? <laughs> <laughs> and um so about the location. Uh, because that's that was the piece that I brought in as well. Yeah. Um, so that was shot uh, near uh, Collington, which is a very close suburb of uh, of Edinburgh, uh, on the south uh, southwest, and um, more precisely in a fairly long tunnel, and that used to be a uh, train track uh, that got converted, I think, in the seventies uh, to make a footpath, uh, because the train track was. Um, not being used that much and uh, and so there's this huge 500 meter long uh, tunnel and when I went to visit it uh, prior to the shoot I just fell in love with it and I, yeah. I just saw the potential and I, I like the texture of the walls yeah. and, and that great. definitely the location for it was fantastic um, so that that image that we've got on the screen here uh, that was um, that was one of the earliest uh, shot that we did but before we talk about this one uh, I just want to show this image here because this is exactly the location that we're talking about uh, this is where we did it there's no retouching whatsoever this is just raw <laughs> really and uh, what we can see is that very orange uh, light throughout the tunnel and personally I didn't like it that much that yeah. color right it was too warm it was too warm and uh, well Thanks to the white balance, we've been able to convert that into something more artistic. Uh, so going back to this one, uh, that was the very first uh, photo of the series that I actually edited. Uh, to me, it was my, one of my favorite one, if mm -hmm. not the favorite. Uh, I discovered another favorite of mine afterwards, and we'll we'll cover it. But for me, it was it, it was a transition in this one. Uh, you had brought up obviously the uh, infamous uh, eyelash, bottom eyelash, mm -hmm. uh, and to me, in that shot, it was great to see uh, the eyelash being present and also playing with the natural shadow of um, of the hat. And, and in terms of the expression that she's got on her face, it was not yet mad. We can feel the toughness yeah. of the character, but we don't yet see. The madness, and yeah. this is going to grow through the through the shoot, yeah. right? And um, what do you, what do you think of it, one? I love it. I just the the fact that the bowler hat was kind of cut right across the eye, it just adds to the fact you can feel it start starting to get edgy. You know, fair expression that it is still that very almost like that robotic feeling that which was what we wanted. She's very autonomous and she's obviously inwardly, it's as if she's going to build and go into this character and just with that menacing one eye, you can see where it's going to lead. So I just think this is a great picture to start with for this shoot. I, I love it. Yeah, absolutely. So next one we talk, we saw this one. And this one is, it's one of my, it's one of my favourite one because it's a behind the scene uh, shot, all right? It's not meant to be artistic at all, but it's meant to, uh, transpose the ambience that, that we yeah. had <laughs> on that day and it was shot fairly late right you started doing the makeup at your place I think it was around 6 30 yeah that's right um, yeah. you initially had a commitment later that evening which you could not <laughs> fulfill yeah. Yeah. Uh, we had too much fun yeah. uh, but we started shooting I think it was around 7 30 yeah. uh, and uh, so it was pretty dark uh, or it was getting dark outside that it was certainly getting cold there was a bit of a draft uh, where we were um, big thumbs up to your man uh, in the picture Scott. hey Scott uh, <laughs> you've been such uh, such a great help uh, I did not expect you to participate as much as you've been willing to do and that, that you definitely pulled your your fair share. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is one absolutely. And as you can see, I mean, the light uh, he's been tremendous with it, really helping me. And we'll see in the other sh shots as well that he played a massive role in the execution of the uh, of the shots. So yeah. uh, really, thumbs up, mate. I really appreciate what you did here. Cheers, Scott. Um, so this is another 
Um, another one. And before, I, instead of starting, I'm going to let you speak first. What do you, what, do you, what do you think about this one? I love this. Um, the, some of these images came about as actually by fluke because we'd seen uh, Kirsty's shadow. And I was like, oh my God, we both agreed. We're like, this is really cool. Is there any way we can emphasize the shadow? Is there any way we can make it so that you can capture the detail from her but also not lose any of the balance of the shadow? And it just works. I mean, the stance is perfect. She's obviously standing there ready to go. She's almost ready to break out. And our shadows there behind her ready backing her up. And I just... I love it and I love the contrast with the wall as well, the fact you've got the different tones of grey which is obviously the balance against with how white obviously her outfit is. I really like it. Well it's interesting because you mentioned flux um, but it's it's something that we didn't plan and it happened as you said. Yeah. Uh, we saw the shadow casting at the back behind her and we decided to go this way. It gives us the creative edge that we needed, the yeah. impulse. Uh, and this was not none of the shots that you're gonna to see today, uh, out of this series were actually f made in Photoshop per se. I mean, yeah. all of them were really achieved in the camera on location, mm -hmm. playing with uh, with flashes and everything. There's nothing unreal added later on, right? So the shadow is real. It was there, uh, and it took us actually quite some time to actually yeah. position the light <laughs> exactly the way we wanted. Uh, and we're dealing with a live model here, so it's not it's not always easy to actually say to her, "Well, you you got to stay still and and, and keep and the pose." <laughs> and to me, in this one, what I what, what I liked about this one, and there's another one as well, is that we were talking about the crazy personality of that uh, character. But I remember I haven't read the book, but I remember in the movie, no matter how crazy, dangerous, and psychopath. The, uh, the the character is, it, it always had some kind of a camp attitude. Yeah. You know, yeah. being elegant. I think it, it, that's yeah. the weird thing, right? And we're not talking about a dirty biker tattoo all over the yeah. place, tough from, from toes to neck. We're talking about a guy that has a weird personality but also enjoy, enjoy being elegant and the appearance plays a lot and the fact that he wears a ball hat and and, and his gang yeah. are wearing the same clothes as well so the 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 fashion aspect of it is mm -hmm. essential to his character i think and, and in that shot she's not appearing mad she's appearing beautiful uh and with an attitude yeah. of some sort and that's what i like about this one as well uh and and it's this shadow, it's almost the darker edge of yeah. uh, of that nice, beautiful appearance, but there's the dark side as well. That, that, that reminds us of this, I find, a little bit. She loved that cane. <laughs> oh, yeah, she did. <laughs> and, and this one as well, I think, goes along the line of, uh, of the previous shot. We still yeah. have that shadow, uh, a bit Charlie Chaplin type mm -hmm. shadow, the way it's cast... Uh, much more than what we had here. That was yeah. more uh, going forward, kind of an in, almost investigator. It's almost a different hat the yeah. way the shadow is cast. Whereas here, kind of really bold hat with her with her hair on the side gives kind of a Charlie Chaplin yeah, curly thing. haircut. Uh, the cane obviously reminds that. Yeah. Uh, and as she's standing on the uh, on the edge of that curb. Uh, it almost reminds us as well of uh, dancing, um, uh, dancing in the rain. Uh, yeah, like the tight ropes and stuff, and singing in the rain with the. Oh, yeah, what was, I forgot his name. Um, uh, it's not Grace it's, Kelly. No, the, uh, the um, huh? I'm gonna write it down on the screen if I don't find it. But it's not. Um, <sighs> it's not Charlton Austin. It's the um, Austin. Is it not something like this? Uh, with the umbrella and stuff like yeah. that, it's great, that's so brilliant. It's I know what you mean by the feeling though, with it, when he's walking along the curb and he's walking along the edge with it, yeah, I get that feel as well. And I, and I think on her face, something weird is happening. It's like she's getting ready. To start. She's almost <laughs> uneasy, but it's, it's kind of a creepy side. Uh, so Chaplin on the left, being gentle and, and funny <laughs> and all, and then her face is literally changing and uh, leading to what the next shot is going to be a bit more creepy, yeah. right? <laughs>
same attitude on this one, mm -hmm. right? Uh, weirdly enough, that was not meant to be a shot. Uh, she's obviously, it, I was changing lights and yeah, uh, right. she put her jacket back on. Uh, and we could argue, well, the jacket doesn't really match the rest, but it does because the leather jacket with the leather boots still worked for me. Mm -hmm. And the the overall attitude of that one is very elegant, very camp, a very bourgeois uh, type of, uh, of posture as well. Uh, it's, it's funny because when I look at that picture, I'm thinking that a horse is actually very close to, <laughs> close by. Um, but, and her face is, is something odd with her face. Yeah. Right? And um, she's not pretty that way. And she's not meant to be pretty. There's something odd, and that's what, that's what I like about it. I think we caught her in. Was she not... I'm sure she was walking back and forth with the cane. Yeah. And she was swinging the cane. And this I was said, hold like, it! Yeah, it was just totally nonchalant the way it happened. And she was just like, what, what? And we're like, stay there, stay there. <laughs> and, and, and again, we, we've got a little bit of shadows um, cast uh, behind her, uh, her heels. Um, and now we're diving into yeah. the dirty... Uh, the dirtiness of uh, of the shoot. What well, yeah. what you got to say about this one? Her smirk's fantastic. She's just like yeah, this is it. Here I am. This is her really settled into the character. Really sort of grasp. This is the transition that you need to make. You need to go for being very elegant and beautiful. You are now demonic to a sense, and you're just out to create total anarchy. But you love it. Like there's no remorse, and she's. That smirk just conveys every single thing that I asked her to. I love it. I think it's great. I, I, I totally love it too. Uh, I think clearly it's it's getting harder in this shot to see a woman. Yeah. And I've seen... Uh, anybody can type Google and Clockwork Orange costume and we'll see m most of the costumes are actually uh, girls using those for um, Halloween and parties. Yeah. And I always found, when I looked at those, because I looked at those before the shoot, to try to get an idea of uh, what, what the real costume is like. And I found it was a bit fake. Yeah. Uh, and clearly we see we see the, the chest, you know, popping up. And to me, that I didn't quite like that aspect of it. I, yeah. I wanted to be more androgen between the, the boy yeah. and, the, uh, and, yeah. and, and, and the girl. And here on this one, literally in the edit, obviously, I... I accentuated what you normally wouldn't for uh, for a woman. So adding more shadows uh, around the neck, for example, and around the face to make her look a little bit more boyish and dirty. And I, in my mind, when I looked at the picture, I, I thought about minors for some reason. Oh, That's what yeah. I had in mind. Um, you know, because of that tunnel and yeah. and, and, the, and the shirt, and I wanted to really make the shirt a bit dirty and hand dirty and nothing clean about this uh, the, this shot and I found the result is really um, a strong maleish result rather than yeah. a, a girl wanted to be a boy yeah she needed the she need, definitely needed the masculinity to come mm. through in it and that's what I tried to explain to her about the shoot I was like you're not a female it's not like a drag thing you're not a female trying to be a guy in a sense like reverse role I was like you are take it that you are a guy. Like, yeah. that's your masculinity is totally taking over your femininity. So think as if you were a guy's perspective. That's just the way you take it. And, and if it wasn't for the hair that we see on the side, which I refused to remove in Photoshop because it was part of her uh, and part of the idea of a girl as yeah. well. But if it wasn't for the hair, you could barely tell that it's actually uh, a girl on, the, on yeah. this photo. Um, another thing that I had in mind is look at the detail for you guys, pay attention to details when you're making a shoot uh, because what was important to me is that little reflection of light on the ribbon on the on the ball hat. To me, that was important. Uh, it gives a depth and mm -hmm. uh, a identity uh, to that ball hat. Mm -hmm. uh, if we didn't have it, it would just be a hat, but we wouldn't be able to tell whether it's a ball hat or if it was another type of hat. And to me, that reminds us that we have this this ribbon around, um, so a tiny detail. So, <laughs> I feel like a, a rabbit caught in the, uh, in the yeah, headlights, right? Um, yeah. But something disturbing about this one, the eyelash is phenomenal. And guys, this is not made once again in Photoshop. This is really uh, your work, the eyelash that you, uh, you, you put on her on this one. I think it really, uh, was challenging as he was moving throughout yeah. the shoot uh, and but my eyelashes are 
hard to work with. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I really like this one. This uh, definitely your expression is mm -hmm. uh, is interesting, right? Yeah, definitely. She's a uh, Kirsty was a bit um, on the back burner <laughs> with this one because I think as the characters developed and she's obviously seen it back through a different perspective and then seen it especially on a bigger screen she was like oh my god I d it doesn't look like me <laughs> and I think I actually scared her quite a bit because looking at it like in the camera on the night it's quite a small screen it's quite it's obviously you're just taking it that oh it looks good but then for the actress well for the model's point of view she's she didn't even recognize herself so yeah I I think we've definitely went full. We went there. She's definitely she reached does. her demonic capacity yeah. in this picture. She's like, yeah, I'm pretty much going to about murder. <laughs> <laughs> She's had enough. I, mean, um, I think it's always a bit scary because, like any actor would say, there's always a, a little part of a your own personality, mm -hmm. you know, uh, being transposed in yeah. whatever character you, you you're trying to convey, and that might be a bit scary as well for her and not being used to be that type of a harsh, tough, uh, yeah. crazy personality. She she's, she's a little bit crazy, but in a nice way. But yeah, not, she's you know, really mellow. But, but not, not that way. So, yeah. <laughs> I love it. So, That's this it. one. I love it. <laughs> when I saw this, this this photo, I fell in love with it because, guys, this the original was this way. right? I played with the colors, but in terms of the light, I didn't change anything. That was exactly it. So, mm -hmm. I used a... Um, uh, a grid, um, a honeycomb grid on my Cobra Flash, and just from underneath and going straight for her face uh, with a with a long focal lens, and I really liked the the fact that the the light was only on the top part of her head, uh, and the the magical a aspect of it is the shadow cast by the ball hat, which created some kind of a mask mm -hmm. uh, around her eyes. And that's a bonus. I, I didn't want to go for that. I didn't that I didn't plan for it. What I all, the only thing I wanted was just that light on her top of her face and getting that angular uh, type of result mm -hmm. as well. Um, and I think the light makes the whole shot here worthwhile, right? That's great. That's it. It's brilliant. And same again, we have this uh, little reflection at the top of the uh, yeah on the, on the, ribbon. On the ribbon. So uh, once again, uh, I quite like that. So this is where Scott. Yeah, needs pyrotechnics. <laughs> <laughs> He's very reserved pyrotechnics. <laughs> so it was. Um, this is not Photoshop. This is. Uh, I'll do a tutorial on this. Uh, it's the burning wool technique, and this is the first time I admit. This is the first time I did it. I I knew how to do it, but I had never experienced it myself, uh, and as uh, it wasn't planned. No. Right, suffice to say, so we were at your place, you were yeah. about to start a makeup, and I was just sitting there trying to think about what we were going to do, and then I was like, how long your makeup is going to last for, and you were like, well, another half an hour or so, and I'm like, okay, well, let's go to the nearest shop, and I'm going to get a wisp, a kitchen wisp. Oh, yeah, yeah, the wisp. <laughs> I'm going to get uh, a rope, rope, and I'm going to get the steel wool and a battery, and we're going to try to make it work. Yeah. So totally unplanned, and thanks to Scott, uh, I didn't have to run from behind the camera to behind yeah. my model, and he was uh, he was uh, kind enough to actually uh, participate and do the exercise of doing this uh, this trick, uh, this natural trick behind her. And I think that gives some kind of a dimension mm -hmm. uh, to it. I call I, I call okay. I like the light on this one as well. Mm -hmm. uh, clearly not a planned shot as she's wearing her jacket. So yeah definitely during uh, a change of light or something yeah and uh, it turns out that I said well just keep it we I think it was probably a trial for the um, for the spinning wheel yeah. behind it was a trial and it turns out to be a fantastic one yeah. so uh, we kept it but um, I think this is Kirsty's favorite actually this one I'm at the end no she preferred the other one did she prefer the, the, other the one, one that we all like oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. And she did like this one as well because she said that uh, she commented she was like I've got my jacket on and I was like this must have been a test shot but it just goes to show you that a test can you can come up with something beautiful as well when it's actually no plans so yeah I love it I like the leather aspect of the a jacket right yeah. if she had been wearing kind of a North Face you know, oh, polo yeah, jacket yeah, that would not yeah, have worked. worked but I think here it, it does work in somewhat how and you know the dirty biker type uh, of the 50s uh, 
you know, they were using leather jackets. So yeah, it, it, does, it does work. In, it might not be authentic uh, in, in, with regard to the book or, or the movie, but in the spirit, I think it, it matches. Yeah. Uh, the expression on her face is very soft. Yeah. Uh, a, ver a very contrast, uh, a very contrasting in terms of the madness that we were trying to convey. Mm -hmm. It's not shown here. And I think when looking at a whole series, I see it as a personality. Obviously, um, the whole clockwork orange meaning mm -hmm. uh, that we discovered fairly late in yeah. the process of having that referring to this um, robotic mm -hmm. um, uh, behavior uh -huh. uh, a crazy behavior in, in, in um, with regard to Alex's character. Uh, and here, when we look at a shoot and a variety of expression throughout the shoot, we can kind of go to the opposite of the real Clockwork Orange meaning yeah. because we can see a graduation, a transition between personality and aspect of the personality, which yeah. to me is it's more interesting photographically speaking than having all the photo conveying that crazy madness scene. Yeah, you need not. yeah, you need to show it building gradually because that's that's exactly what the story Clockwork Orange is. It starts off with him actually being this demonic, um, like basically he's meant to be like human on the outside, robotic on the inside, and we just anarchy is just built into him, and then it shows you him then becoming a, a normal person in society. So. In the book, it even shows you that transition. We've kind of sort of went in our own way with it, but we still wanted to show this build up to character rather than just this is the expression and run with it for different poses. We'd rather show that this is a character developing throughout a series. And it, it, might, it might also be um, in the movie, because that's, uh, that, that's the only record I have, but the in the movie, at the end, when he's going through all the experiment yeah, and, yeah. and he's going back into a human. Uh, yeah. behavior and feelings and emotions uh, it's it's almost in a way what we're getting here yeah. uh, the toughness of the of the location of the clothing very uh, typical of that character yeah. uh, but still the face is showing expressions that we hadn't seen before yeah. uh, being more humanized and uh, yeah it's less clinical yes that's another uh, spinning wool uh, <laughs> shot <laughs> kind of cabaret in the way yeah. Right, and that, that reminds me of the uh, the whole um, dancey camp attitude yeah. type of thing, kind of jovial, despite the craziness that could be twenty three hours a day, and then one hour of craziness cabaret camp yeah. stuff. And yeah, we're done with humor and stuff. Yeah. Done with sort of that edge. I like the halo behind uh, created by yeah. the uh, by the rotating um, wisp. Mm -hmm. uh, really like it. That yeah, is the killer shot. Yeah, that was it, the umbrella. That was like the oh. umbrella. Like, don't know how was that something Scott made? Was that an accident as well when he was flicking it the way the light? He moved it and stuff. I well, I remember telling uh, asking Scott to try instead of spinning it. Oh yeah, you try spinning over his head, head over and his that's head. how we actually got that, that, uh, it changed that umbrella the direction. type. In terms of the light, uh, guys, I've been using uh, soft boxes, uh, a strip uh, soft box, throughout the shoot, and I'll do a video about the soft boxes and diffusers in general very soon. But that's what I used here, and once. You've watched that video that I'm about to do. You'll understand why I actually use that, uh, and I'll refer to this shot as well. Uh, we can really see that I was able to mm -hmm. direct the light exactly where I wanted to, uh, and you know, it's, it wasn't a type of. Usually, what we did, we were we had uh, Kirsty moving around trying to find position, and then mm -hmm. we we'll just say hold it, and then once we were happy with the position, and then positioning the light accordingly yeah. to, to really get what we wanted to get. And here to me, the most important thing at the end, what is really uh, identifying the character uh, physically is the eye, right? Yeah. And the eyelash, that's the trademark of that movie. Yeah, definitely. And uh, that book, and I think the light really is bang on on this one. Yeah. Um, totally love it. Fantastic. This yeah, one. this is this was Kirsty's favorite. I, I forgot because I was like, she liked that one at first until we seen this one, and then she was like, oh no no, this this I love this one. And it is. It's still got that. It's got the edge to it as well. Our mouth. And the the mouth. I mean, it's just yeah. it's it's something tough on it. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's really weird. Um. No. Yeah. I love it.
So that's just to show you what oh, the ambience was. So it was cold. <laughs> it was very cold. <laughs> you can tell. Last season in my parka <laughs> was like dressed for winter. Poor Kirsty. She tripped through. L- laughs throughout. Uh, so really good ambience. Totally loved it. Um, and that's Scott. <laughs> Scott. Scott and a wisp. So you guys could say that it wasn't Photoshop. It was really the uh, the. The, the the utensil that we had uh, oh, I loved and it. very rustic with a piece of rope I went to get oh, from I home lo- base I and... loved it <laughs> I did uh, I totally loved it so that's alright that's a total different range right yep. Um, yep. and then we moved on <laughs> it was I think they in order so we we did that one right at the end yeah uh, actually probably before the last shot because i still see some wool inside the the, the wisp that was probably yeah. before the last shot yeah and then i was like oh, okay let's I, th- I think what happened during the shoot and that's how i operate at the beginning you need to warm up a bit like a diesel engine yeah then you in you you in it right mm-hmm. you, you're producing and then it comes to a point where it's like when you stay up all night and I, by the little morning, when just before you should go to bed, suddenly you get this adrenaline popping up, yeah, you and rush. You, you that rush, and you become so high, and that's when you start acting crazy and and talking shit and, and, and having fun really. And I was like, no, come on, come on, we gotta do something, we gotta do something. So we pulled the eyelash, which was by the end kind of dropping a little bit. Yeah, I was like, get rid of this. And I was like, oh, Kirsty, I need to do something. Uh, so. Let's go against the wall. Get, let's use that texture. And there were a lot of graffitis on the walls. And I wanted to use that. Doing kind of an urban fashion uh, shoot, mini shoot with, uh, with with her. And I think she just pulled it off. I mean, it was yeah. definitely, in a, definitely in the backyard, right? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Uh, totally love it. She just, she's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I love her lips. Um, there's something about her lips. The little opening that she's got on her lips. It's just yeah. it's so sensual. And it's squinting. I'm always telling my model, yeah. squint, squint, squint. You can never squint enough. <laughs> Even a Chinese doesn't squint enough. Uh, it's just so inviting. I, I, I totally love this one. Mm, it's good. She's She got right into that as well. She was like, oh, she was like, we're going to go back into sort of her wee comfort zone with the fashion and stuff. And it was amazing to see because you dad start to, obviously, as a young model, portray this really intense character and... She did it. She got into her comfort zone and, and then created that character brilliant for us. And then, as soon as she asked to do fashion, she just went boom. She just went right into it. It's like you know that she's now used to this and she can get fashion down to a T, which is is great, obviously, for a photographer and a makeup artist as well for a, somebody that's confident in a certain subject. So, and what was what was we we got lucky as well on the location with regard to um, the colours and the texture. Yeah. I mean, look at this graffiti. It was naturally purple violet this way. Uh, her pimples, right? It was right on the in the correct um, matching colors as well. Yeah. Um, and I may have used, um, I think I may have used a uh, a gel on my flash. As we can see, the the shirt is not really white. It's a little bit. Uh, the U is a little bit violet, uh, magenta, and I may have done something there. I can't remember. Uh, but I love this one. A little bit of attitude, but it's always good. Mm-hmm. Uh, totally love it. <laughs> So this one, um, I, I like to say it's worthy of H&M. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, I, I, I love this one. It's, I, when I was editing it, I was like, oh, that's a shame that instead of pulling on her suspenders uh, with the left hand, she was pulling on her jacket. I should have removed the jacket and used the suspender. But uh, the more I, I, I looked at this image, the more I said to myself, actually, no. Because it would have been too obvious. People always play with the suspenders, right? Yeah. They always do this. And the fact that it's just like one suspender, one jacket, it's, I don't know, it's it's different. It's definitely H&M, though. Eh? Like you, could, you could quite easily see that as a campaign for their, like their autumn, winter fashion. I love it. Mm. I do, I like the contrast of the colours as well. And did you notice the little light? Yeah, the, the ribbon. light, the, the ribbon. Light. That ribbon works so well <laughs> in that hat. I totally love it. And that's that's the last one, mm-hmm. uh, and that is my that's my Christ. <laughs> yeah, her pose is very um, yes. Very crusty. <laughs> yeah, she's it's like sacrilegious. <laughs> yeah, uh, kind of a Madonna slash um, Michael Jackson 
slash Jesus Christ. Uh, it's got some sort of 80s vibe rocking. It does, it. Yeah, it does, right? It's got an 80s fashion vibe. Like you can see it in a music video or something. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and the the texture on the wall and the graffiti, yeah. it's just, it's, it's lovely. I really had fun uh, trying to get this edge afterwards, playing with the colours uh, in post-production. Uh, but yeah, totally love it. And that's uh, that's the one. This concludes the uh, the, the the shoot. So um, it was it was great. I had a lot of fun. Yeah, it was definitely it was loads of fun. At eleven o'clock at night, it's still there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was only going to be a couple of hours. It never ended like that. Did we only finish at eleven? Actually, oh, I think it was about half past uh, eleven at night. Let's see this one. Actually, we I get the time on this one. I'm sure it was really uh, late because I was meant to be somewhere at ten o'clock. Hey. Half past, half past 11. Yep, I thought that because I was meant to be so, at the, at the theatre at half past 10, that's right. So the time that we wrapped up everything and left, it was yeah. close to midnight. Uh, yeah. I dropped her off and it was uh, it was 1 o'clock when I got home. Uh, but it was I was so happy with it. And it took me forever to actually go through the edits uh, because I was busy with uh, with, with work. Uh, but at the, six months down the line, Nearly six months, uh, not not six months, May. So it's not six months, but several months down the line, I'm still so excited. And every time I look at those pictures, it just reminds me of that night and the the fun that we had. Yeah, it was loads of fun. It, it was. was definitely. So uh, I hope you find that informative. I hope you 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 enjoy this uh, little look behind the scene. Uh, and let me know in the comment in the comments if you uh, if you enjoy this video and if you want to get more of those uh, videos. And uh, in the future, we'll. Uh, We'll do that uh, with our shoot. And uh, if you've got any question in terms of the gear used and everything, uh, I'm gonna put some details in the um, in my blog, obviously. Uh, but go for it in the in the comments. And uh, until then, this is Tommy. Got saying, if you like it, well, capture it. Have fun, guys. Photography is an art, and it's meant to be a passion as well. So just have fun, and the results will speak for itself. And collaboration—that's the key here. Right? Yep. Right. Ciao. Bye.